Okay, guys. I think it's finally time to tell everybody what I've been working on this spring so far. I finally finished up my last semester of school. Got that out of the way, so I'm ready to jump headfirst into the saddle thing and see, uh, see what we can do with this, right? It's always been a thing I've just dabbled with and it allowed me to, it was like a side gig that allowed me to go back to school. Now I've never really advertised or really put any effort into, hey, buy my stuff, right? Uh, it's mostly been you guys and just telling your buddies, hey, I got this saddle, it's really awesome, it's well-made, it's made in the US, it's comfortable. And then that person would contact me and so on and so on, right? Um, so the website looks a little different. It's going to have some new uh, new products, mainly the uh, single panel saddle, the Orion will be on there, and then also uh, tether and lineman's ropes and a back band, and maybe uh, one of these chest rigs back here if I can figure out how I wanna do that. So first of all, we'll start with these small things, the uh, tether and lineman's rope. These are gonna be made from Sterling 9mm HTP, which is, You'd be hard pressed to find a, a more durable rope that you use in the saddle hunting world. It's, uh, I like it better than eight millimeter because eight millimeter is not very durable. This nine millimeter is not a lot bigger than eight millimeter, but it's, it's bomb proof. It's good rope. The friction hitches I like to use on the saddle and on my, my personal ropes for tether and lineman's ropes is Sterling seven millimeter accessory cord. It's, like it's made to work with this HTP. It, it slides so smooth on HTP. And it's just a good, you know, it's made by Sterling. It's good rope. I tie these in a uh, cruciate configuration because it's simple for your everybody to use, for beginners to use, whatever. If a cruciate tightens up on you and doesn't want to slide like right now, I just push down on that little cross piece there like that, and then it'll slide again. So a Prusik is pretty simple. Uh, for you guys that want to tie this in a distal or a swabish or any other type of hitch, you can. I've just tied them on there so you can untie it. Use this rope that's meant to be used with HTP to make your own friction hitch however you uh, want to run it. The carabiners on these ropes are going to be the carabiner that I've recommended for years to people. I don't even care, like, you know, like you can buy a $40 carabiner, a $35, $40 carabiner. I haven't found one that costs that much that I like better than this one. This is uh, made by Fusion, which oddly enough is made by ADF, the same people that make the ADF Raptor buckles. This is a Fusion auto-locking carabiner, so you give it half a twist, pull it open, close it, auto-lock. Right? No twisting, just half a twist, pull it open. They're black. They're strong, they're good carabiners, and they engraved them for me. So that's what will come with the tether and lineman's ropes. It's the same exact setup that I use personally. The tether will be seven feet long after knots, and the lineman's rope will be nine feet long after knots. Next up is a back band. Now, I don't personally use a back band, but I know lots of guys that do, so I built a few back bands up, sent those out to people that use them, and people seem to like this one. This is a, a padded back band, kind of like a gunsling, has neoprene sandwiched in between two pieces of Cordura, and then your one inch webbing is shown to that. So throw that around your back, position it where you want it, and then clip it into the carabiner on your tether and lean back into your back band. Uh, if you need to lengthen it, you just pull on that tab. If you need to shorten it, you just pull on the tag again. Pretty basic back band, but it takes me a little longer to build these and a little bit more material to build them, but they're padded so you can wear it comfortably for a long time instead of just being fabric, which eventually cuts into you a little bit. Those will be on the website ready to go sometime this week also. To the saddles, the transformer is still gonna be on the website. It's gonna be a little bit different than what we've had before. Looks really similar. The main changes are gonna be the, uh, the webbing is routed in the same way that the old Anderson sling and the uh, tree hopper recon is routed. So you have, if you guys should understand what I'm talking about, you've asked me that question a million times, like how is the webbing routed? Is it like the Anderson sling? Well, now it is. 
So your top panel and your bottom panel are completely independent of each other. And the next upgrade is the D-rings. I've never been able to keep a D-ring in stock throughout COVID. Just can't do it. Fusion, who is owned by ADF, the last time I was ordering buckles, they said, hey, we've got a D-ring you might like. This is a Fusion D-ring. It's tan to match the saddles. It's made of steel instead of aluminum, which initially I thought, well, we can't do that. It'll be too heavy. It's 0.1 ounce heavier than the, uh, the aluminum. So if I put one in each hand, you wouldn't be able to tell me which one was heavier. It's 0.1 ounce, uh, but it is stronger. And it's the 23 kilonewton D-ring, but unlike aluminum, which breaks when it fails, this would just bend. So you would have a heads up before it became an issue. And it's really small, thin, right? Another benefit of using this D-ring over the aluminum that helped me kind of make this decision was that it's round bar stock, right? So because it's round, it slides on this webbing or the webbing slides on it even easier than it did before. So you get that automatic adjustment from the transformer even smoother than you did before. The third change with the transformer is the position of the leg buckles. Before I had a tri-glide here that you fed your leg buckle strap into and you could adjust it, all that, right? To keep your D-ring from hitting the, uh, the buckles. I did away with that connection point <coughs> and cleaned it up a little bit. So now the buckles live on the saddle body, on the side of it. And you just bring your, uh, your buckle, you know, in between these two straps here, you bring it in, clip it in, and it just lives there. Now, a couple benefits to that is you do away with another failure point. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The main benefit for me is that you get those buckles away from any metal on the D-rings, the waist buckle, any of that. So there's no, no potential for noise. They're now on the saddle body. And the other benefit is that you take the weight of those buckles off of the leg straps. So if you look at this old ride, there's no leg buckle on that leg strap, right? It lives here on the side of the saddle. And what that does, the weight of that buckle on those leg straps will cause those leg straps to droop down onto your thighs. And when you go to walk, it creates resistance. Anybody that's ever walked with their leg straps on knows what I'm talking about. That creates a lot of resistance and, and limits how far you can move your legs. And it adds weight to the leg straps so you feel them on the front of your legs. By putting these on the saddle body instead, you don't feel the leg straps on the front of your legs anymore. They're just lightweight little pieces of fabric up there. No, uh, no leg buckle slamming them to the front of your thigh when you're walking. If you wanted to remove these on both of them, they're still removable. You would just unclick the male end, right? Take that male end off of this strap and the uh, leg straps live in this little sleeve right here that I created. So you can pull it out. Right? And take those off the washroom or something if you needed to. Or just maybe leave them off for a little bit to uh, air things out. Uh, all of the buckles now are engraved. Overwatch Outdoors. They're still ADF Raptor buckles, but they're engraved now. And I changed the sizing up just a little bit. Uh, just based on feedback I've gotten from you guys, the size 1 is now a little bit bigger and covers a broader range, and the size 2 is a little bit bigger and covers a broader range. So if I was a 37-inch uh, waist or below, I would take a size 1. A 38-inch waist and above, all the way up to like 44, 46, can fit in a size 2. So they're a little bit bigger than they were in the beginning. Um, the Orion Single Panel Saddle. I've been making this one as a custom saddle myself for a little over a year now. And based on feedback, just dealing with people, I've uh, kind of perfected the sizing and the angles and everything on it, I feel like. Uh, put a little bit more of a curve on the top edge, just a little bit more. Spencer Valeri, he is big on that. Uh, and he's right. I think adding that little bit of a, a little bit more curve on the top helped out. I changed the sizing of the seat portion just a little bit, made it a little bit wider, just like with the transformer, so it fits a broader range of people. The uh, leg buckles, same as the transformer, live on the side of the saddle here. If you wanted to take it off, 
then that female limb would just live there on your saddle. It doesn't really flop around and make noise. Uh, that was a concern I had. Another concern I had was the uh, carabiner on your lineman's loop hitting this buckle. It hasn't been an issue at all. It, it comes down here and just hangs right here. Uh, so it hasn't been a problem for me, especially when you're leaning back. I mean, the uh, carabiner is way out here. It feeds through a sleeve, just like on the transformer. You can pull that out if you needed to. Just like on the transformer, you have these two adjustment straps. Now for this saddle, it's a single panel pleated saddle. The adjustment straps keep the pleat closed while you're walking in or while you're leaning. I keep, when I go to lean, I just close my pleat all the way up and it's perfect for leaning. When I wanna sit, I let the pleat out. And now you've got that rounded seat portion that'll hug your butt and won't ride up your back. When you're finished with it, the way I do it, and I just take it off, give it a pop and it closes, and then tighten those back up. Yep. You can just tighten these up while you're wearing it and close it back up. I don't know, just the way I do it. I don't really wear my saddle in very often. Um, let's see, change some of the materials around a little bit. I was using a, uh, a 4,500 pound one inch uh, nylon webbing for the molly and the leg stretch before. It was really soft, which I liked, but the weave was kind of loose on it. So like briars could pick it, things like that, make little loops in it. It just wasn't very, wasn't always, wasn't as durable as I wanted it to be. So I upgraded to a little bit more durable webbing. This is just as strong as the webbing I was using before, but it's a much tighter weave, like a mil spec webbing. Um, costs a lot more, but I like it way better. The uh, adjustment straps on the Transformer and on the Orion, you, I used to just, uh, used to just sew those right here to this horizontal webbing and it was right on top and it was fine, it was strong. Um, I've recently got a bar tacking machine, so I changed that up. Now I mount that webbing underneath this horizontal webbing and then bar tack on top of it. Uh, bar tack is about the strongest sticks that you can make. The auto molly on these saddles is bar tack now also. All the stress points, if you look, uh, you find one. Out here on the ends, bar tacking, bar tacking where the panels connect, bar tacking. Right. So it just makes things really, really durable. But now these look a lot cleaner. If I loosen this up, pull it up, see it fits under that webbing. Just a nice, tidy, cleaner looking package. <coughs> Both saddles are going to be offered in only one camouflage. It'll be uh, multi-cam arid, which is what you see here. It's just tans, browns, Looks good in the fall woods. I've hunted with this uh, for the past year and a half since it came out. And uh, I really like it in the woods. It's a good pattern in the woods. It's just not really feasible to offer like two or three different camo patterns in two or three different sizes. You, you just can't keep that crap in stock. So they're going to be multi-cam arid, size one, size two. Now, I will be making all of these saddles myself now. We were having... Uh, a factory in Florida make everything and we ran into some availability issues especially last summer uh, and I would call and hey yeah we'll have those 50 saddles to you in three weeks right and that would turn into three months and I would have to call and email all of you and I hated doing that and then I got to doing the math and I thought in three months I can make a couple hundred saddles by myself why am I waiting three months for a factory to make something make 50 of something that I can make 200 of in that same amount of time I just didn't have time because I was in school full time. Now I'm going to be sitting here sewing saddles all day, every day. And if it gets to the point that we need to hire people, that's awesome. That's where I'm hoping to go with this is uh, eventually hire a couple of people that are uh, interested in learning how to sew these things the same way that I did. So that is uh, all the products I think that'll be on the website right now. The Orion saddle, the Transformer saddle, the Backband, the Tether and Lyman's, the t-shirt, which if you order a saddle on the website now, if, when you put it in your cart, it's going to have a pop-up that says, what size t-shirt do you wear? And you just put in your t-shirt size and you get a free t-shirt with your saddle order. And I think you'll also be getting a, uh, a window decal over Watch Outdoors sticker to go on your truck window or the bow case or wherever you're going to put it on. 
Uh, the pricing on everything has gone up just a little bit. I fought that for the last two and a half, three years, trying to keep everything the same price, but the truth is the cost of materials has gone up quite a bit, and I finally am gonna have to reflect that in my pricing. If I want this to be a legitimate company instead of just a side gig that pays my bills while I was in school, if, I need, you know, if I'm gonna hire employees, I need to charge what everybody else that has employees is charging, right? So that's understandable though. Uh, it's not gonna be like way more than everybody else. It's still gonna be, for what you're getting, a 100% American-made product. It's gonna be right in line with what other people are charging and you're getting a superior product, right? That's the, uh, that's the thing that everybody says about my products is when you put your hands on them, you can tell that they're, they're made with quality. The materials are top notch, the craftsmanship top notch. I build every one of these things like I'm building it for myself. So if I'm sewn along and I make a mistake, those stitches come out and we fix it. And I try to make it as perfect as I possibly can make it because I want you guys to be 100% happy with, with what you're getting. Um, other than that, today is the 14th, I think. So by the end of this week, we should have saddles on the website. If it's on the website and it says it's in stock, it's gonna ship immediately. There's no wait on those. If it's in stock, we ship it, right? If it's not in stock, you're going to have an option to back order. And by back order, I don't mean everybody place orders and we wait six months to get stuff. Um, should be able to keep it rolling pretty smooth. You're, I'm talking a couple of weeks maybe on a back order, hopefully. Unless you guys just go nuts and buy a lot of them and then I'm gonna hire some employees and, and we'll get caught up. But that's uh, pretty much what's going on right now. I'm going to continue to work on the website some this week, but I'm also just gonna be in here pumping out shadows. I think I've got eight to 10 built already. And I'm looking to be able to build 12 to 15 saddles per week. I've never sold 12 to 16 saddles per week, so I don't think availability is gonna be a huge issue, but we will see. Guys, I appreciate all of your support over the last couple of years. Yeah, I couldn't have done everything I've done in the last few years without you guys buying this stuff. I don't want to annoy everybody with social media and, hey, buy this, buy that. You know, I hate to advertise. I hate to market. It's just not who I am. I like this word of mouth thing that you guys have done for me so far. But I'm also probably going to be annoying you a little bit on social media with, hey, here's a video of me making a saddle. Here's a video of me in a tree using a saddle, you know, trying to advertise. So you'll be seeing my ugly mug a little bit more than usual. Anyway. Head to the website, check out the new saddles. If it's something you feel like you'd enjoy, give it an order and we'll get it to you as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you guys.